Okay, so let's look at this question. It says, ignoring details associated with the friction, extra, oh, okay, so I'm going to model this uh, pole vaulter as a sphere. Because that's what they're inviting us to do. Um, let's say it's an athlete of some mass M, uh, athlete in vacuum, spherical athlete in vacuum. <laughs> uh, Pole volt is a conversion of an athlete's running kinetic energy, okay, has some initial speed of V0, um, to a gravitational potential energy. If an athlete is to lift his body 5 meters during a vault, so I'm imagining some scenario where he is run and he's uh, jumping over some um, obstacle. I know it's not a wall, it's like, you know, you don't run into a wall, but um, so some jump and the athlete has to reach this spot. And uh, we are given, let me just uh, be careful in how I indicate the height, from center of mass to center of mass, some difference in height, h. So um, what speed must he have when he plants his pole? And I'm going to make a further uh, simplifications, approximations that makes this question answerable. For one, at the top here, even though you know real pole vault, the speed of the athlete won't be zero. They need to have some horizontal speed to go over. I'm just going to assume that the speed of the athlete here is close enough to zero that I can neglect it. Not only is our athlete in vacuum, spherical, um, he will also somehow reach zero. So the what the real picture looks like in, along this uh, approximation is when the athlete comes here, suddenly all of the kinetic energy gets converted, or the, suddenly his velocity gets uh, redirected from horizontal to vertical. And then um, just to, um, that as the athlete goes up, the kinetic energy turns into potential energy, kinetic energy reaches zero at the top, and then just the falls straight down, which isn't real pole vaulting, but uh, which makes um, this estimate feasible. So this is a, a conservation of uh, energy question. So when you are using conservation law, you should have a snapshot in mind. So, um, well, uh, these are the kind of the steps that I lay out if you've seen my lecture. So conservation law strategy. The very first step, or what I might even call step number zero, is you need to identify some conserved quantity. And so far, it's going to be relatively simple, because if anything's conserved, it's going to be energy. Uh, this week, we are covering momentum, and now you have to think a little more. Uh, so once you've identified the conserved quantity, then the way um, conservation law is useful is it allows you to say that this conserved quantity, for example, the total energy, in one particular moment in time in processes is equal to the same quantity, total energy, at a different moment. And at these different moments, the expression for this conserved quantity might be slightly different, and it might allow you to set up an equation that relates some of the known quantities to unknown quantities. So once you've identified the conserved quantity, the next thing you should do is you, you need to identify these snapshots. What snapshots will actually allow you to figure out the quantity? So here you are looking for the speed of the athlete, the uh, moment before they uh, jump up. So the moment their launch speed, so to speak. So this is going to be one of our snapshots. We'll say this is our snapshot one. We are going to write down the expression for total energy at that moment in time. And then uh, we need to be able to relate it to some other given quantity. And one given quantity we have is the change in height, delta the h, what I've labeled as h. And for us to be able to use that quantity, we need to make this one of our other snapshots that will allow us to relate, well, how does this speed relate to the height that they reach? So with that in mind, let's uh, uh, write down the rest of our equations. So we need an expression for total energy. And let me just write the full expression, knowing some of the quantities will just go to zero. 
So uh, total energy, that's going to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. That's equal to the kinetic energy at snapshot 2 plus the potential energy at snapshot 2. Uh, kinetic energy, I know that from the definition of kinetic energy, 1 half mv1 squared. And potential energy, I'm going to make life simple for myself. I'm going to say this is y equal to 0. This is the location where gravitational potential energy is 0. I'll just say 0 there. And at the top, um, I've set up the situation so that my kinetic energy will be zero there. It makes things easier for me. <laughs> so zero kinetic energy in snapshot two plus the potential energy. So if I set y equals zero here, then y is equal to h here. So the gravitational potential energy from the derivation you've seen elsewhere, it's going to be mg times h. So this is our equation. Let's just double check. We have the right number of unknowns. Um, we don't know the mass, but I'm seeing a really good cancellation here because of these zeros. I can just cancel and from both sides. Great. I don't need to know the mass. Um, I don't know V. I'm looking for that. And oops, why did I say V1? V0. Uh, speed at V1 was V0. <laughs> um, okay, I'm looking for that. That's good. Um, G, I, it's a physical constant, I know that. H, I'm given this number, I know that. So all I have to do is now do the algebra, solve this for V0, and plug in the numbers. In the interest of time, I'm going to do that algebra in my head. You can just stop and uh, double check that I didn't make mistakes. So V0 here is going to be square root of 2GH. And let me just double check the units to make sure I didn't make algebra mistake. Uh, g is meter per second squared, h is meter, multiply that, meter squared per second squared, square root, meter per second. So the units work out, so I probably didn't make algebra mistakes. So let me plug in the numbers. Square root of uh, 2 times 9.8 times the height, 5. Um, so the athlete must be at the speed of 9.90 meter per second. That's pretty high. I think that's a, that is a sprinting speed, like 20 miles per hour, um, which, you know, I, I think um, 100 meter sprinters can probably sprint them faster, but still pretty high. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that question.